There are a few more things that repository managers can do with dataset metadata to improve discoverability. In this section, we'll cover a brief introduction to connection metadata. We'll elaborate on the three main types of connection that can be established through metadata and the services they enable. The DOI string and the descriptive metadata they come with can help users reliably find and cite a resource which enables discovery through metadata aggregators like data portals and indexes. That's all good if you know exactly what you're looking for, like the title, the author of the article. Or do you want to cast a wider net? With DOI metadata, we can answer questions like which or how many papers cite a dataset, which software was used to create a dataset, which dataset are associated with a particular research institution or funder, which datasets are associated with a particular creator or contributor. We do this by using connection metadata with persistent identifiers. Connection metadata is metadata that represents relationships or connections between different entities. For example, you could have connection metadata for a paper citing a dataset, a person authoring a paper, a person's affiliation with an institution. An institution funding a research project that generates many outputs, or data set being generated by, the, by a piece of software. This metadata helps facilitate interoperability between persistent identifiers and persistent identifier systems, and open research infrastructure in general. There are a few different places in the data set metadata schema where you can provide connections to other persistent identifiers. First, there is a related identifier property. This allows you to make connections to related research outputs. For example, you could link to an article that sets, cites the dataset or an earlier version of the dataset. In this field, we ideally want to see a persistent identifier like another DOI, but you can also link to an URL, for example, for example, if there isn't a persistent identifier available. There are also a handful of attributes attached to other properties that allows you to add related identifiers, including name identifier for creators and contributors, affiliation identifier for their affiliations, and the funder identifier for funding references. Creators and contributors have a name identifier attribute that can be used to uniquely identify authors and contributors for an individual contributor, typically this will be an ORCID ID, or for an organization, you might use a ROAR ID here. Individual creators and contributors can also have affiliations, which are indicated in a separate affiliation identifier property. This would typically be a ROAR ID for an organization. And another place where organizations can be included is a funder identifier, where you can make reference to funding organizations. The Crossref Funder Registry has been a provider of identifiers for funders for some time, and this is quite heavily used. But you can alternatively provide a rule ID here, which may make sense for repositories that are already using rule in other fields. Now let's dive into these three types of connections one by one. First, connecting objects to objects. As mentioned, in dataset metadata, we use a related identifier field to capture connections between objects. This connection represents relationship between a DOI and another identifier, usually for a research output. The value of the related identifier element should be a full URL of the identifier. So keep the HTTPS colon slash slash DOI.org slash if it is a DOI. Four sub-elements are associated with this field. The related identifier type and the relation type fields are required, and the resource type general and the related metadata scheme fields are optional. Note that the scheme-related elements are only required when has metadata and its metadata for relation types are used. We'll come back to relation types in a moment. Here's a Fabrica interface where related identifiers can be added. The dataset schema currently supports 19 different types of identifiers, 
including ARC, archive ID, handle, PMID, URL, URN, etc. Of course, also DOI and IGSN. This information can be defined in the related identifier type field, which contain a controlled list of vocabularies. Last but not least, relation type between the objects should be defined when linking related identifiers. Currently, the schema supports 17 types of relationships expressed in pairs to distinguish between directions, borrowing is identical to and is published in relation types. For the sake of easy understanding, we put them into five conceptual categories. The citation category include cites is cited by, references is referenced by, and is supplemented to, and is supplemented by. These are arguably the three most important pairs of relations, which I will come back to in the next slide. But first, let's go through the rest of the relations. The relations in the versioning category are usually ab applied to different manifestations of the same objects. These include is new version of, is previous or version of, has version, is version of, is obsolete by, obsolete, and is identical to. The con contextualization relations are applied to related objects that provide additional information to the object, like documentation, reviews, and technical specifications. This category includes is described by, describes, has metadata, is metadata for, is documented by, documents, is reviewed by, reviews. The whole part category is a small but versatile category. The is part of, has part relation is sometimes used as a catch-all relation type when no other options are appropriate or the relation type is difficult to specify. In this circumstance, we encourage you to reach out to the data site team or the metadata working group to provide the description of your use case for the relation type. This will be valuable references for us. The generation dependencies category catches relationships such as software and code that use compiles and is compiled by relation type, raw and processed data, which is appropriate for is source of and is derived from relation type, and data set experimental protocol relations, which may be appropriate for requires and is required by relation type. Arguably, the most important and most prevalently used relations between objects is citation and references. Citations and references are links between research outputs. You can add citations references to DOI metadata when you create the DOI initially and with subsequent updates to the metadata. The table elaborates on the specific meaning of the relations, and how data set process, and display the statistics derived from them. These are quite easily confused, so it's a good idea to put a pin on this slide or find a table on the data support site. As per the previous slide, when a data site DOI is updated to add a related identifier with one of the relation types for citations or references, a corresponding event is created. The event metadata can be accessed through the data site event data API as well as a REST API. The Event Data API contains a list of events in the data section. The REST API DOIS endpoint can be used to query DOI connection metadata. Citations and references are summarized in the relationship section of the response. Alternatively, the event metadata is also processed and visualized on the data set comments interface. You can find it in the citation section of each work record that contains related identifier metadata. Data site comments will provide a summary of all related works based on their published, published year, work type, and licensing. Finding where existing connections are there among objects, one can use the GraphQL API. The GraphQL playground can be accessed at api.datasite.org/graphq. QL. And as usual, the documentation is available on the support site. Now let's move on to object and organization connections. This type of connection specifically represents relationship between a creator or contributor, 
which can be a person or organization, and their affiliated organization. Affiliation identifiers make it easier to find research outputs associated with a particular institution. Affiliation identifier is a sub-element under the creator-contributor element. The value should be a name of the institution, and optionally, you can add affiliation identifier in the full URL format. And if you do that, affiliation identifier scheme attribute is required to accompany the URL. On the right-hand side, you can see an example metadata snippet of data site as affiliation of creator Elizabeth Miller with a raw ID of data site attached to the affiliation sub-element. Affiliation can be added in Fabrica. You can type the name of the institution and RUR will auto-complete your input and fill in the raw ID field for you. In the data site schema, affiliation identifier equals to organization identifier. Several registries of organization IDs are available. We recommend RUR as it's open and community-led, and DataSite is one of RUR's three operating organizations, along with Crossref and Di California Digital Library. Finally, we have funder identifier for funding references. Funding references represent a relationship between a DOI and a funding organization that financially supported the work that resulted in the research output represented by the DOI. The funding reference block contains information on the funder, funder name and funder identifier, identifier type and scheme, as well as specific grant or award number URL and the grant title. Currently, the funding identifier type field have controlled list options unlike the name and affiliation identifier schemes, which are uncontrolled. Controlled list options include Crossref funder IDs, GRID, ISNI, ROAR, and other. It is under consideration to make creating funder reference more open and allow other schemes here. Similar to ROAR-powered affiliation auto-completion, adding funding information on Fabrica is empowered by Crossref Funder Registry, which will auto-complete the funder name string to avoid mistype and fill in funder identifier without menu entry. Connection between objects and organizations in the metadata is also expressed on the comments organization page, which will provide an at-a-glance overview of all related outputs from an institution including general information, citation view and download statistics of related outputs, and visualization of output analytics. Connections between objects and organizations can also be queried using the GraphQL API. Here we show an example query of the first 100 outputs that has over 100 views that are associated with the University of Oxford. Finally, let's take a closer look at associating objects to people. We use the name identifier element to represent the relationship between a DOI and a creator or contributor, identified unambiguously by their ORCID ID. The name identifier element field, ORCID ID or other person identifier or creator or contributor is accepted in its full URL format if available. Additionally, name identifier scheme and scheme URI can be defined as sub-elements. Name identifiers can also be added in Fabrica. If an ORCID or raw ID is entered, name fields will be populated automatically. Note that only authenticated ORCID IDs controlled via OAuth should be included in DOI metadata. It is easy to find connections between people and objects. User can search for researcher using their, the people tab on Dataset Commons, and on the person profile page, all of the outputs this particular research has created and contributed will be listed with visualized analytics. As with previous types of connections, connection between objects and people can also be queried using GraphQL API. On the right-hand side is an example of finding all outputs of a particular researcher 
that have funding references associated. Entering ORCID references in Delta metadata is useful as or DOIs can be automatically added to ORCID records when the name identifier metadata for creators includes an ORCID ID. This makes the ORCID ID to DOI connection available not only in Delta metadata, but also in ORCID metadata. To enable ORCID auto update, sign in on data sites using your ORCID credentials, go to the settings page and get ORCID token to allow data site to update ORCID records. After obtaining the ORCID token, log into ORCID and select certain link option when add work to ORCID record, select data site as a source and on the following page authorize access to complete the setup. At this point, we've gone through the three types of connections that can be made using the dataset schema. In summary, dataset metadata schemas support connection metadata through the related identifier, name identifier, affiliation identifier, and funder identifier. Connection can be established through objects and objects, objects to organizations, or objects and people. Connections enable services like event data and ORCID claiming. Connections can be found via data set comments, the REST API, and the GraphQL API. Thank you for your attention, and don't forget to check out the other parts of this training series.